A very warm welcome to all our viewers. I'm Anjali from Simply Learn, and today I'll be showing you how you can install the configuration management tool Ansible. So let's have a brief about why one would use Ansible and what exactly is Ansible. So if you consider the case of an organization, it has a very large infrastructure, which means it has more than probably hundreds of systems. And giving one or even a small team of people the responsibility to configure all these systems makes their work really tough, repetitive and as you know manual work is always prone to errors. So Ansible is a tool which can automate the configuration of all these systems. With Ansible, a small team of system administrators can write simple codes in YAML and these codes are deployed onto the hundreds and thousands of servers which configures them to the desired states. So Ansible automates configuration management that is configuring your systems it automates orchestration which means it brings together a number of applications and decides an order in which these are executed and it also automates deployment of the applications now that we know what ansible does let's move on to the installation of ansible so here is my oracle vm virtualbox manager i'll be using two systems there's the node system which is basically my client system and there's the server system or the master system. So let's begin at our server system. So this is my master system guys. So the first thing we do is we download our Ansible tool. So one thing we must remember with Ansible is that unlike Chef or Puppet, Ansible is a push type of configuration management tool. So what this means is that the entire control here lies with your master or your server system. This is where you write your configuration files and these are also responsible for pushing these configuration files onto your node or client system as and when required. Great, so our Ansible tool is installed. Now we need to open an Ansible host file and there we'll specify the details of our node or client machine. So this is our Ansible host file. As you can see here, the entire file is commented, but there's a certain syntax that you'd observe. For example, here we have a group name, web servers, under which we have the IP addresses or certain host name. So this is about how we'll be adding the details for our client system. First, we need to give a group name. Under this group, basically, we add all the clients which require a certain type of configuration. Since we are using just one node, we'll give only the details for that particular node. First, we need to add the IP address of our client machine. So let's just go back to our client machine. And this here is the IP address 192.168.2.11. Once you have typed in your IP address, give a space and then we'll specify the user for our client machine. So all communications between the server or the master system and the client or the node system takes place through SSH. SSH basically provides a secure channel for the transfer of information. Follow this up with your password. In my case, it's the roots password. And that's it, we are done. So now we save this file and go back to our terminal. So now that our host file is written, the next thing we do is we write our playbook. So playbook is the technical term used for all the configuration files that we write in Ansible. Now playbooks are written in YAML. YAML is extremely simple to both write and understand. It's in fact very close to English. So now we'll write our playbook. The playbook or any code in YAML first starts with three dashes. This indicates the beginning of your file. Next thing. We need to give a name to our playbook. So name and I'm going to name my playbook sample book. We next need to specify our host systems, which is basically the systems at which the configuration file or the playbook in our case will be executed. So we'll be executing this at the client machines mentioned under the group Ansible servers. So we had just one client machine under it. We'll still mention the group name. We next need to specify the username with which we'll be logging into our client machine, which is root in my case. And become true specifies that you need to become the root to execute this playbook. 
so becoming the roots called a privilege escalation. Next, we need to specify our tasks. So these are basically the actions that the playbook will be performing. So you would have noticed everything so far is aligned. That is name, host, remote user, become and task because these are at one level. Now, whatever comes under task will be shifted slightly towards the right. Although YAML is extremely simple to understand and read both, it's a little tricky while writing because you need to be very careful about the indentations and the spacing. So my first task is install httpd, which is basically a Apache server. So now my command yum, and this will be installing the httpd package. And the latest state of it will be installed. So that's our first task. Now our second task could be running our Apache service. So name run httpd and the action, which is service, will be performed on httpd, hence the name httpd and state must be started. Now we come to our third task. So here we'll create a very simple web page that will be hosted. So create content is the name of our task. And the content that we are creating here will basically be copied to our node system at a particular file location that we'll provide. Our content will be congrats. And then we'll provide the destination at which this file will be copied. So this is the default location for all our HTML files. And that's it. We are done writing our playbook. Just save this and go back to your terminal. Before we execute the playbook or push the playbook onto our node system, let's check the syntax of our playbook. So the command for doing so is and if everything's fine with your playbook, the output would be just your playbook name. So our syntax is perfectly fine. Now we can push on the playbook to our node or the client machine. And that's the syntax for doing so. Now as your playbook is being sent over to the client machine, you can see that first the facts are gathered. That is the current state of your client machine is first fetched to check what all is to be changed and what is already present. So the first thing is installing HTTPD. So our system already had HTTPD. So it says OK because this does not need to be changed. Our next task was running HTTPD. Now, although our system had the Apache service, it was not running. So that is one thing that was changed. The next was there was no content available. So the content was also added. So two tasks were changed and four things were okay. Now everything seems fine. And before you move any forward, it is very important that you check this one line of documentation provided by Ansible. You have all kind of information available here regarding which all tasks were executed, if your client machine was reachable or unreachable and so on. So now that everything's fine here, we can move on to our node system and we'll just go to our browser. So if our playbook has been executed here, what should happen is that the HTTPD service must be in the running state and the web page that we created should be hosted. So let's just type localhost. And great, everything's working fine. So our web page is displayed here. So we come to an end for our installation and configuration video for the configuration management tool Ansible. If you have any doubts, please post them in the comment section below and we'll definitely get back to you as soon as possible. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Also subscribe to our channel if you have not yet. This is Anjali signing off. See you all next time. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.